Hey everyone, what's up? It is Dr. Charlie Johnson, physical therapist, uh, and as someone who consults with people worldwide with unresolved back, butt, and sciatica problems, um, I commonly get questions about x-rays, MRIs, and other diagnostic tests. Uh, one question I got recently that I thought was interesting and maybe worth chatting about was this idea of like, hey, Dr. Charlie, will an MRI show piriformis syndrome? And so in this video, I wanna talk about the diagnostic utility of MRIs for figuring out if you have piriformis syndrome or identifying piriformis syndrome and help you answer the question of will an MRI show piriformis syndrome or not. Now, before I dive into things real quick, I'm guessing because you're watching this video, you have some type of pain in the butt or you may think that you have piriformis syndrome. Either way, if you'd like to skip the MRI, save a bunch of time, energy, and money, I'd recommend you check out my DIY diagnostic guide. I call it a better than an MRI diagnostic guide because I truly believe that, where literally I share with you my step-by-step -step flow chart and sort of logic behind you know, figuring out uh, what is going on with you. So check out that. Again, you can download above as well as in the comments um, below. Now, that being said, let's dive right on in. All right, so will an MRI show piriformis syndrome? So first things first, let's break this question down to make things super clear and just make sure that we are all on the same page. So what does an MRI do? Well, an MRI is a diagnostic test that takes detailed pictures of the tissues inside the body. So think, think uh, bones, joints, uh, discs, ligaments, nerves, pretty much all kinds of different things inside of the body. Now, what is piriformis syndrome? Well, the piriformis is just a muscle deep in your butt cheek, right? And a syndrome, according to Webster's Dictionary, right, is a group of signs and symptoms that occur and characterize a particular sort of abnormality or condition. And now that we've redefined some of these you know, key words, let's rephrase the question. So the question is better worded as this. Will a diagnostic test, the MRI is what we're talking about, right, that takes detailed pictures of the tissues inside your body show a piriformis muscle abnormality? Good question. And the answer is yes, an MRI will show muscle abnormalities. But then the ultimate question becomes, what is abnormal? So the top two abnormalities that are most commonly found by MRI, uh, you know, when looking for, say, piriformis syndrome will be, you know, differences in the size of the piriformis muscle from the right to the left side or your painful to non-painful side, right? As well as an anatomical variation where the sciatic nerve actually splits through the piriformis muscle. Um, some folks refer to it as a split piriformis. That's just what I saw and that's what I've heard, right? Doesn't really matter, but just recognize that in some cases, about 15% of people, the sciatic nerve actually pierces through the piriformis muscle. So let's talk size first. So MRIs may find that your piriformis muscle is smaller or thinner or sort of atrophied. By the way, they all sort of mean the same thing, all right? Or on the other end of the spectrum, they may find that you know your piriformis muscle is larger or thicker or hypertrophied, oversized, right? Compared to the other non-painful side. And so, of course, I've seen many comments floating around the internet, and I also get comments on my videos and people shooting me messages, right? Of people sharing how they have this pain in the butt, and theirs is due to their piriformis muscle being smaller or thinner than it should be, whatever that means, right? And for every comment or person that sends me a message that says that that's the reason why they hurt, right? You have just as many people, right, reporting that their muscle, their piriformis muscle, was found to be actually enlarged or bigger, and that's the reason why they hurt. So it's very common that the size of the piriformis muscle for smaller or for bigger, right, gets blamed as to the cause of someone's pain. And taking this a step further, I always find it interesting how quickly and effortlessly people in pain, as well as medical providers, right, people in the medical community, justify the MRI findings by essentially tagging on some form of story or narrative that fits their current worldview and or belief system, right? So for example, if the MRI shows that the piriformis muscle on the painful side is smaller, then the narrative becomes like, ah, totally makes sense. Like, that's what I was thinking. It's smaller. And of course my leg feels weak. That would make sense, right? So I need to strengthen it. And you also have people again on the other end of the spectrum, right? You can tell that same person that their piriformis muscle, you know, wasn't smaller. It was in fact enlarged, right? Hypertrophy, bigger than the other non-painful side, right? And they'll say, hey, you know, that's the reason why it hurts. And they'll justify that explanation by saying, ah, it totally makes sense as well, right? It's bigger. So it must just be pinching or pushing on the sciatic nerve. I need to stretch it or loosen it up. Do you see how silly this all is and how, you know, just a little change in verbiage could completely change what you do and what you believe and what you think is the problem? So if your painful side is smaller, 
then just by comparison, the other non-painful good side that you're not complaining about, that you're not worried about, that you don't care about, right, must be larger and or vice versa. But the smaller or larger piriformis on your good leg doesn't cause an issue and you're not worried about it and is of no concern. So how is it then that the size of the piriformis muscle matters and or is a reasonable explanation for why you hurt? And then you have some people who have pain on both sides and they're super confused because one is bigger and one is smaller, but both sides hurt. What the heck is going on, right? Um, but somehow they still believe that it has something to do, the size of the piriformis muscle has something to do with why they hurt, even though one side's small, one side's big, and both of them hurt. Kind of weird, right? So the reasoning behind this idea of size causing uh, the piriformis problem, right, is just beyond flawed, and it causes people to live in theory land. And so look, if you're still on the fence, and you're like, Charlie, like, I'm not buying it, right? Then just think of it like this. If you're like most people, you probably have one bicep or one gun that is bigger than the other gun, right? And that's because maybe you're more dominant on one side or the other, just like you probably are with your feet, right? So let's just say your right bicep is slightly larger than your left bicep, which mine is by like half an inch, all right? Um, so let's just say that one day your right arm starts to hurt, right? And, you know, are you going to pin the cause of your bicep pain or your arm pain in this area, you know, on the fact that your right bicep is bigger or smaller? Right? That would be weird, right? So what makes this problem in your butt cheek any different? So just because, you know, this muscle or this problem is deep in your butt cheek and you can't see it, or it seems very mysterious because people are telling you all kinds of different things, you know, you see this person, they tell you this, you see this person, they tell you that, right? Doesn't mean that you can throw common sense, logic, and sort of reasoning out the window. All right, so that's size. Now, let's talk about the second most common abnormality that is found via MRI if you're uh, looking for or trying to figure out or identify a piriformis syndrome, right? So if you take a microscope to your butt cheek, what you'll find that, uh, you know, sometimes uh, they will identify a split piriformis or sort of this anatomical variation, right, it, that occurs in about 15% of people, so a small group of the population, where the sciatic nerve actually pierces through the piriformis muscle. And certainly that should be an issue, right? That's no good. Like, of course, it could get pinched, right? No. So nerves in other areas of your body, such as around your elbow, you know, and really just everywhere are consistently traveling through in about around taking U-turns, right? Like going through different interfaces or holes or things like that inside of your body. And they are designed like that. And they generally cause no problems at all. Not to mention, you were born like that. Meaning, if they find a variation where, you know, if you're one of those lucky people where your sciatic nerve goes through that piriformis muscle, guess what? It didn't just uproot in the middle of the night and then decide to weasel its way through that muscle, all right? It was like that from the day you were born, okay? And so, if you've been pain-free for many years, right, and you've been good to go, had no issue, right, then you unknowingly had that muscle pierced through and it never caused a problem before. So why is it a problem now? It's a problem now because you're looking for an answer. And this makes no sense. And finally, while very uncommon, MRIs could, of course, show some form of piriformis muscle tear, right? But just realize that a significant tear in a muscle is preceded by a very clear injury. Maybe you were jumping or running or doing something, right? There's usually some form of like direct trauma to the muscle itself, right? And here's the thing. If you tear a muscle, it almost always involves some form of uh, very clear and significant bruising and swelling in that area. In this case, the butt cheek, right? So unless you did something, felt a major pull or pop or something like that in your buttock, and then you pulled down your pants, you looked in the mirror, and you saw some type of big bruise, red, not red, purple, blue, maybe it's red too, right? Um, you know, in your butt going down your leg and you saw some big black and blue mark there, then chances are you have no muscle tear. You can essentially rule that out. So as you can see, when you really break things down, right, there's a lot of nuances and just flawed logic in general that people try to apply to their situation when they hurt, you know, based off of what is found on MRI. So you can see it leads all kinds of, leads to all kinds of different rabbit holes and recommendations and beliefs and just like, ugh, right? It keeps you stuck. And none of these, right, size, anatomical split, muscle tear, most of the time they just don't make any sense. People are just, you know, sort of grabbing for straws and looking for reasons as to why they hurt. And so perhaps a better, more logical way to approach the answer is to go back to the intent, right? So why are you seeking an MRI or diagnostics to begin with in the first place? Well, the origin of the question is just rooted in pain or the symptoms that you're experiencing because you hurt or because you have some pain numbs or tingling in your butt or going down your leg. That's why you're getting an image. 
So I've yet to meet anybody who gets an MRI or other diagnostic tests, right, and just like raises their hands and volunteers to have a picture of their butt cheek taken just because or just for fun, right? There's always a reason, and there's a reason that you're seeking out, uh, you know, an MRI or some image to figure out the cause of your butt cheek pain, right? And there's a reason why you're watching this video, for example. So MRIs, while they can show physical structures very well, right, they cannot highlight the pain or the symptoms. They don't, you know, you don't take a picture of your back, your pelvis, your butt cheek, and then, you know, on the MRI, there's like something that's like womp, womp, womp. There's like an arrow pointing to like, hey, like I'm normal. I'm not normal. I'm the cause of pain. I'm not the cause of pain, right? And we know that humans have natural variability within the anatomical system. And so this is super important to understand and sort of brings me to my next point. Can an MRI show or identify piriformis syndrome? So it can absolutely show the piriformis muscle and all the supposed abnormalities, right? But it cannot show the symptoms that must exist in order for you to characterize that which you're experiencing, right, as due to, being due to a piriformis syndrome or a piriformis problem. Because as we know, there is very little correlation between what is found on an image and the pain that people experience. Right, the MRI picks up everything and anything in your body, sort of like a vacuum, right? You can't just tell the vacuum on your floor or the vacuum that you're using, right, to clean up a mess. Like, hey, pick up that Fruit Loop, but not that Fruit Loop, right? I don't know why I picked Fruit Loops, but Fruit Loops sound good right now. So that being said, right, like MRIs cannot separate problematic variation or the cause of your pain from just normal human uh, variation, right? And, and it happens. It's just the way we're built. We're not built perfectly symmetrical, right? We're all a little bit different. So instead, if you've got a pain in the butt, just recognize that the best diagnoses are made first with an unbiased sort of ear, meaning listening to and or understanding of your story, your history, right? What makes things feel better? What makes things feel worse? Other stuff that's going on in your life, stress, life events, etc. Also, location. So your story, location, where are you hurt, right? If you say, hey, I have a pain in my butt and it's going down my leg, but I also have this terrible back pain, then guess what? Like, you don't need MRI. Pretty much coming from your back. All right, but that being said, right, attention to where you're hurt, location, and then a detailed movement exam. So we can start to identify activities or movements that either increase your symptoms or reproduce your symptoms and or things that alleviate your symptoms. And then after we've done this sort of examination, notice I didn't say anything about an image yet, right? Then the next natural sort of step, if you will, right, is natural treatment meaning treatment using both the brain and the body. So having somebody like myself teach you how to move yourself, for example, right? Which would address things found in the examination or the evaluation. And again, this is the sort of next best step. And lastly, here is where we'll pull out the MRI if we need it, right? If all else fails, an MRI or other diagnostic test may be warranted and have some, some utility, may be warranted and have some utility, right? To give you perhaps a little bit more clarity on your case. So this brings me to the final question that might be floating around your head. It's sort of like the elephant in the room. And so I just want to address it really quick before we finish and wrap up this video. So after hearing all this, you might be thinking, hey, Dr. Charlie, like, then what's the use of an MRI? And the truth is, like, not that much in my experience, okay? So let me explain. You know, some would argue that uh, an MRI might be useful to rule out other problems. So first things first, an MRI may be useful to rule out or clear the back of any issues, right? So since most buttock pain is actually caused by a problem upstream in the back, so you've got your butt and then you've got your back. Well, any discs, joints, um, you know, ligaments, things like that, they can actually, if you irritate them, cause pain down here, right? So you irritate something up here and womp, 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 you'll feel in your butt cheek. You might not have to have any back pain at all, but again, back problems most commonly refer to, yes, the back, but really into the butt cheek, all right? So if, for example, they take an MRI and your back looks pretty good or nothing sort of out of the norm, then you can probably feel highly confident, right, that the back is not the problem and you can sort of rule it out. Now, what I would really agree with is that MRIs are really good at, and I would say this is a primary sort of um, place, if you will, in the diagnostic spectrum. Um, they are really good at ruling out big, ugly, scary things, all right? So I uh, think tumors, fractures, infections. Okay, so that about wraps it up. You know, the next time, if you wonder if you have piriformis syndrome and are thinking an MRI might be sort of your best bet, think again. And as for other tests like ultrasounds, you know, Botox or lidocaine injections into uh, the piriformis muscle to sort of see if they relieve your pain or see if they can find anything right, like similar faulty logics apply. And while that's sort of outside the scope of this video, just recognize that um, we could chew those up as well. So hopefully this helps um, 
That's all I've got. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications um, when I go live every single week with new content. Um, and then let me know in the comments below, right? Like, have you gotten an MRI to try to diagnose the cause of your butt or your leg pain? Was it helpful, right? What did it show, right? Was it a surprise to you or not? I'd also love to hear your thoughts on this video, right? Um, and any comments or questions you might have. And as a final reminder, again, if you want to skip the MRI, download my DIY uh, Better Than an MRI Diagnostic Guide and sort of go through step-by-step -step through the flowchart algorithm that I've developed to help you figure out the most likely source of your symptoms. That's all I got. Again, this is Dr. Charlie, physical therapist. I help people worldwide with unresolved back butt or sciatica problems. Uh, until next time, stay well, and we will chat soon. Thanks.